All right, so I'm Mike DiPaolo. My day job is I'm a system administrator. Um, in my free time, I've been contributing to X2Go and numerous related and upstream open source projects like uh, like LibSSH and uh, uh, Pulse Audio, et cetera. I've recently been working on better, how to better integrate X2Go, Tiger VNC, and potentially other remote desktop solutions into the you know, Fedora desktop experience. But before I begin, I'll talk about this presentation is not about it. VDI, which is, you know, virtual desktop infrastructure. I mean, the assumption of VDI is, you know, you have to have a hypervisor and you have all the special code to make the d desktops possible. Well, it offers features that are really nice and like, you know, here's this desktop image that users get, here's this image that users get. It prevents you from, you know, remoting into your own, you know, desktop or laptop in the office or from, you know, going to a physical server in your lab, et cetera. Or into or like cloud instances where you don't have, where you can't do nested virtualization. If people have questions about these, I can talk about them, but they're not part of this presentation. What is the presentation is about is you know remote desktop. So, I mean, m most people think when they say remote desktop, they think Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol specifically, and uh, their client is called RDC Remote Desktop Connection. Whereas, as people on uh, people I've talked to, believe the best you know, the best generic term is remote desktop. Some people call it like terminal server, but that can be for other things too. And it's also a very like antiquated term that you have to explain you know to less technical people. So that's why. I think the best term for multiple well, the protocol, the solution is remote desktop. Um, and that generally includes remote applications too. Um, and the three solutions that I'm, you know, the two solutions that I consider, you know, stable and ready to be used right now in Fedora are Tiger, VNC, and X2Go. Note that uh, Tiger, there's numerous VNC servers and clients and implementations out there, but Tiger VNC is the best, you know, and most well-rounded uh, uh, you know, VNC server and client for Linux. and the clients for uh, Mac OS X and Windows are pretty good also, so that it, Tiger VNC is actually included in RHEL, but you know, Fedora has a newer version available with more features. And, um, and X2Go is in, uh, is in uh, EPL in Fedora. Spice, I'm not supposed to EPL, but I know it's in Fedora. And again, I, uh, so X11 itself, you know, it's X11, X.org is a display server. The display server handles, you know, keyboard, you know, input, Keyboard, mouse, some of these newer devices, um, you know, graphics, display, and some other stuff like clipboard sharing and like window manager properties. I mean, there's really good presentations by the way, and developers about the limitations of X11, but it does, you know, it does not, X11 itself does not concern th things like audio or what applications get stored up automatically when I log into a desktop environment. Those are all separate standards that are, you know, related to X11 but not part of X11 itself. So. Um, I'll put I'll put these quick start guides uh, you know available somewhere like on the wiki, but it's really simple to get to get an X2Go server started. Um, it's you just install those two packages, install compatible desktop environment. I'll explain plug and work this much later, and then you enable those two services. Um, and Tiger VNC, it's you know, one server package to install. You can basically use any desktop environment, although. The, 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 the logic for launching which desktop session is currently in that script right there on the Fedora systems. And while you can often get away with a simpler, you know, command line command, I recommend, this is the one that I've always been using successfully. It starts a VNC server on the next available port and you can connect to it with your own username and password because it's using PAM for authentication. And by the way, you will need to open up the firewall port. So if it says, if it says I'm, I'm running on display colon two, that's X11 port colon two and VNC port colon two, so the five nine zero two for VNC to open up your firewall. Um, so that's the in the intro, and I'll talk about the depth of the different features of the remote desktop solution. So, so like I mentioned, Tiger VNC, it's in RHEL, it's in Fedora, and X2Go is you know it's it's relatively new to Fedora, which only about two years, included in Fedora about a year and a half ago by Orion, who's an, been an excellent packager. Um, and so the main difference in Spice is also available too. I mean, the main purpose of Spice is that it's a protocol that the K, you know, KVM hypervisor implements as a better alternative to VNC. It has a lot more features. Uh, but there is a, you can run Spice for like remote desktop. There's xSpice, which is basically, you know, x.org configured to use Spice as like a driver. Um, however, it, the, the, there's very there's really like poor integration. Like right now, there's a bug where you have to like tell it to use 
user lib exec like xorg dot real instead of user lib exec xorg or something. I intend to fix those bugs soon, but for now, I, I'm only recommending people try t Tiger VNC next to go. Um, so you can see right here. So the benefit of having Tiger VNC next to go is you know, Tiger VNC does support the badly needed feature like I mentioned earlier, the ability to resume sessions. So that you know, if, if you if you lose your connection to your remote desktop server, your apps don't just like stop running. Or, or um, you don't you know, you can reconnect and resume your state with unreliable Wi-Fi like this. The ability to resume a session is especially important. Um, the people talking the, the, the Hyatt Hotel here is, is unreliable Wi-Fi. Um, so, I mean, Tiger Bean itself, it's basically, you know, it's, it's a little bit more than just a remote display server. They, there has been significant, you know, development in terms of improving performance, especially in terms of, you know, better JPEG compression um, and adapting the algorithm of JPEG compression to the type of data that's on the screen. But it does not support the other features that you associate with the Linux desktop, like audio. It does not support uh, file transfers from client to server or printer sharing. Um, there are, you know, there are other Tiger VNC clients, I'm sorry, there are other VNC clients out there that you can use with it, and those are available from mobile operating systems, but there's no official Tiger VNC client for mobile operating systems. Um, and I think that next, next to go, you know, it is like, it, it does have those desktop features that you would expect from similar to Microsoft Remote Desktop, for example. And I'll talk a little bit more about WAN performance later, but the really nice thing that Exigo and Spice have that Tiger VNC lacks is the ability to cache it, like image data. So say you view a photo or you open up your start menu once, and then you close it and reopen it. With Tiger VNC, it has to be sent the data all over again. Whereas with Exigo and Spice, it's either in memory or on disk, and it can just show it. And with the extremely, another perfect example of that caching is moving windows around. So please, you know, dragging and drop, dragging your window with the window manager. The Tiger VNC that the, the image data has to be resent, where the execution spice is just like move the window out. You know its contents. And, and these are more like the, the first page, like the you know the high level features. These are more like the more technical features. So uh, I said I mentioned integrated session handling. So a Tiger VNC, it's like you know uh, I used to typically connect to my Tiger VNC server, but uh, SSH start the VNC server process, and then and then I can connect it with VNC, although I can, you can technically you can force it to listen on local host, so you can force SSH for and it'll tell you VNC. Whereas with X2Go, it always uses SSH. It's X2Go client uses the lib SSH library, and that in turn calls some commands on the server like X2Go run command, and that in turn launches X2Go's, you know, Display server called NX Agent, part of the NX the package. Um, but you know, I don't have to tell novice users to run com commands so they can start connect to a desktop session. I just you can just tell your uh, regular users, you know, connect to this this host name, default port 22, and select the desktop environment. Um, another example, a related feature is you know the ability to select the session you want, like GNOME or KDE or XFC, or th things like GNOME, GNOME versus GNOME. Uh, uh, fallback, uh, GNOME Classic, those are separate X sessions. And whereas if you're logging in locally with GDM or another display manager, you can select those X sessions. Um, session Broker is, you know, it's it's not as easy to set up as simply installing a run XTGO server, but Session Broker for XTGO, you can have your clients connect to the one session broker. From there, it'll refer them to, you know, which server to connect to, like. And by doing that, it can do load balancing and can have centralized configuration. So, like a lot of the things that you would normally send next to a client can be stored on the XTGO broker, like which desktop environments are available and which servers. Um, sharing out physical desktops, that's, you know, that is a useful feature for you know, remote desktop features to have, but the basic, it's it's not like the way I recommend use either Tiger or King XTGO because the performance is always terrible. It basically is what's like pixel scraping, like render it to the local monitor and then try to send the What's rendered to the VNC and many people, like Fedora Workstation right now it ha and, with, and GNOME has the screen sharing feature built in. I, I forget the package name, but it's using VNC and you know it's it's good for remote tech support, but it's you're never going to get the good performance or other features like you can get with a real you know a virtual VNC server like the like like a command I showed you. And, and similar to the fact that there's you know. Mentioned that Xtgo and Spice have caching. Well, that's because basically they use you know client side rendering. I mean, Xtgo is rather than completely disregarding the X11 protocol, it uses an Xlibs to send X11 over like the SSH tunnel and like compressed and 
very different format. So on one end of the tunnel is standard X11 clients, on the other end is an X server. So with XGO client for Windows and Mac, we literally use an X server. But it, that approach of you know working with the X11 protocol to make it more efficient rather than just regarding it is why XGO can have a really good you know, performance in terms of you know responsive to users and low bandwidth. Um, the one limitation though with XGO and, and XLibs is that it's you know is in XLibs was developed by No Machine for No Machine one uh, in X one through three. They made it open source, but they didn't open source the rest of their code. So, uh, and then with No Machine in X four, they said, "What's going to go proprietary?" And go with a completely different architecture. So at this point, uh, XGO and other projects are maintaining in, in XLibs, but until we we're working on trying to port the latest desktop environments like desktop environments that require the composite extension or GLX 1.4 instead of 1.2, but that's going to be, those will be added in the coming months, so it works like a year or so. Okay, now for the actual demos. So let me just die. I'm connected to this machine, uh, Amazon EC2 instance right now. Uh, well, you can't really see it, but it's, it's an Amazon EC2. It's in the you know, Virgin, Northern Virginia. So I have that, that coming in in a script in my home directory. And this is actually an EC2 instance from a Fedora Cloud image, an official Fedora Cloud image that I installed packages on top of you know, enable the services. So. I started the Tiger VNC service says it's listening on port colon one. So while there's, uh, you could probably use the standard remote desktop viewer, I'm using the official Tiger VNC client. And note that in VNC terminology, the viewer is the client. It's, I prefer the term client because it's what every other protocol uses to describe the client. Um, so. with, with Amazon EC2, you have an internal IP and external IP. That's the correct one. So it's, it's running the auto, GNOME auto start uh, applications. Um, there's some different logic for the policy kit in terms of these applications. I'll talk about that later, but call the device. But here you go. Here is the Fedora workstation GNOME desktop in all its beauty, accessed remotely from Northern Virginia and the Amazon uh, Quote Pro Cloud. There's the Xeon class server, servers. And the, the 3D rendering is done via LLVM pipe. The, 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 the software renderer that's much faster than the old soft pipe. So even though you know, GNOME Shell is using GLX and Apposite, uh, it ha there's enough CPU power to keep up for it. Um, but you will see, for example, that dragging windows is not smooth because VNC is, has to use the entire window contents. Although at least white, white, you know, the white area compresses extremely well. JPEG encoding, which is probably the defaulting to. So, if anyone wants me to show them anything specific, I'll here real quick. There's also the Tiger VNC always starts this by default. So, when you configure settings, I'm sorry? Video. What? Video. What about video? Can you play video? I'll try it. Uh, I will talk. Ca ca uh, I, later in this presentation, I will talk about video and how does a really cool approach that the Arctica project has. The Arctica is basically spin off like to go, but for now I'll just show you this. Um, can somebody give me a glass of water? Oh, wait, come on, it's right up there. I guess YouTube doesn't see many people access themselves from Amazon EC2's, you know, IP address space. What the heck? The bacon looks nice, but I can also come pancakes. Yes. <laughs> That's one of the most creative captures I've seen. Good job, Google. So let's try to make it easier ourselves. Would you like the standard size window? But I note that there will be no audio because that's not part of the VNC protocol itself. So there's, you know, small window size and here's full window size um, and 
thank you YouTube for using you know HTML5 and padding free video formats. Oh, look, there's a close up of like the BNC flying back example. I can show you that in this session. One of the limitations that VNC has is, you know, unlike remote X11 or X2Go, you, you cannot, you know, do remote applications. You cannot have the you know, remote application running remotely with a local window decoration and everything. It's just the entire, you know, desktop window. But there are some features that they've added that some systems don't have. Like, I just resize the desktop session by changing the window size with my window manager here. Is that oh that uh, because I passed an argument the VNC server called dash auto kill once the the gnome session you know command quits the VNC server quits and if we have a you know basically a clean log off. Um, next I'll show X to go and not to go. So for those of you who don't know, Mate is the continuation of gnome two. Um, I mean it is. Intentionally a fork of the GNOME desktop environment, but starting with GNOME 2.32. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was, let me show you first how I connected with X2Go. Because you notice I didn't have to run any commands. So, first of all, this is the standard X2Go client. There are two other X2Go clients, one uh, that share code called, um, one is called PyHub GUI. It's a GUI also, but it focuses on having like a taskbar tray icon and connecting the multiple X2Go servers at once. And it's PyHub CLI, which is a command interface. But X2Go clients, it's you know it's a, the most polished of the three X2Go clients, and it's, it's optimized for like you know like thin client you know usage where you have a and single user usage. You know. So um, so you know the session name can name whatever you want. You can change the icon. Um, you can find a nice icon. Again, that's you know, it's Fedora Cloud image. I log into Fedora, and I'm using my SSH key because XT uses SSH, so it has numerous uh, you know SSH authentication options on. And I have to just I'm not taking the fist of this desktop now, but for compatibility with old version B, it's listed as a custom command sometimes. Um, you can see the other uh, you know types of sessions here too. So, and then there's uh, you know, comp compression options. I always leave it to the default. Uh, I call them JPEG. You can chain instead to be like use the whole display, but if you make it a window, you can always resize it later. Keyboard is optional. Sound printing. If sound uses pulse audio. And okay. And then I'll connect it's using my SSH key. So here's the, you know, the Mate desktop. And one of the first things you'll notice is the beauty of you know, client-side rendering. Just like that, I'm moving the window around. No, it's going to be slowly drawing because it has to resend the entire image. Um, desktop resizing. Oh, that worked pretty well. Um, and bowls of a uh, system monitor. Well, that's GNOME system monitor, but you, know, you can generally run GNOME apps into Mate anyway. Um, Note that you know Mate is using uh, the fork of Met uh, Metacity called uh, uh, Marco, so it's not using GLX or Composite, uh, and that's why it's compatible with XGO, but it also makes things a lot faster too because you know having regular X11 windows that the LX server moves around is you know is can be done very efficiently with protocols like like NX. Um, does anybody want to see anything like want to see you two this time again? I think the 
Wi Fi is just becoming kind of easy. So it's about similar to VNC. And VNC is probably a little bit better than remote video, but. Uh, well, I do have, I should have audio actually. So the audio is uncompressed. That's the limitation of pulse audio. So it has it's having trouble keeping up. Um, but on the land, you could you know the audio would work perfectly smoothly. Okay. Um, let me just show you real quick another example. But so I'm just going to go to like user share backgrounds. No. So there's a you know if I just minimize and restore the window, it opens like that. Because again it's, it's caching the you know the image contents of the window. Um, okay, anything else? The one thing I would show is that one thing we've we fixed recently with uh, is uh, policy kit integration with X to go for desktop environment sessions. So I open up uh, Vert Manager, although I can't actually manage the Amazon CC2 instance, it's a proof concept, and Vert Manager is triggering a policy kit window, which used, like a year ago, the policy kit window would like fail to open, and Vert Manager would say, error cannot authenticate, but now it authenticates successfully. And it's, I don't have any games running, but it's proving that, you know, the policy kit integration is uh, working much better now. Policy kit does, however, say that this is a remote session, so I'm going to apply different policies. Hence, why when we launched GNOME, it prompted us for like the password to like manage caller devices. But if you logged in locally, policy would say, "Oh, you're local. I'm not going to prompt you for your password to manage caller devices." Um, thing, um, so single applications. Um, I'll just do a browser. So there you go, I'm running Firefox remotely. Um, I'm going to get a larger window, but uh, full screen. And if I go to um, so GOIP, I'm right, actually identifying as Delaware. There you go. It, it thinks I'm in the Amazon data center, but it's like, this window is actually coming over. You know, X to go. It's a single app, and you know you can have the same apps. You have you know multiple windows, the same application. The X11 protocol supports it, and Xlibs uh, supports that feature too. Now, of course, uh, some features, some things like Grip Manager would not work currently. Uh, I'll discuss that later. How we kind of we on X to go on and you know, help develop like free desktop or extended so that those applications can work correctly. Um, Yeah. Does that work with the application? Yeah, I mean, it, it, mounts, it mounts like a folder under like slash temp slash dot x to go mic, I think. Uh, let, me, let me test it out real quick. Um, you actually add shared folders after you've connected. I just, don't, I just haven't tested to make sure it's working on the end. So I'll show up my desktop folder. I can always add files for later. And auto mount, yeah. And I'll just, I'll just do a full Monte session. Xigo does have a desktop bindings also, so that you can see like a nice icon on the desktop for the shared folder, but I think I forgot to install them. Xigo, there's the, while you have the Xigo window open, and this is like the, you know, part of the next lips product, it's called an Xboxy, there's also the, I used to go plant them in the background and
sure why it's not showing up there. Oh, it's a hidden folder, that's why. You show them folders. So if I add something to my desktop, um, finals. This is most good for example on the desktop. It's basically using the SSH daemon on the on Xcode client to share the files. And it's using SSD to fetch on the server to access them. And, you know, and create, you know, do writes also. So. There are the files. There, there's food.bar just created. So, yeah, I've, I've got to install the, you know, the, the, the Mate bindings package, but, uh, but the folder, should, if I had installed it, you would see an icon right here for the shared folder. And one of the extra developers, uh, Mike Gabriel, is a Debian developer and a Mate developer. So he's, yeah, he's, he's making sure that Mate works very well next to go. And one last thing I want to show is, uh, actually, how am I doing on time? 15 minutes, okay, I won't show it, but, um, so, you know, no, uh, when GNOME was you know, originally was developed, they had GNOME fallback mode, which was uh, the you know, actively maintained Metacity window manager and GNOME panel for the shell. Um, after, with GNOME 3.8, GNOME classic mode was introduced, where it's using uh, GNOME shell and Mutter, and, and it provides a similar look and feel to the old you know, GNOME fallback mode, slash GNOME 2, slash Mate, but it's using the, you know, the, the newer frameworks. Now, however, there's, you know, you still have limit, the, still the issue with, uh, with Modern window manager and GNOME shell that you're using the GLX uh, you know, hardware accelerators or, or, or software 3D rendering all the time, and you're using a pause extension. Uh, Yakov Selkowitz is a Red Hatter who works on ARM for uh, ARM porting for I think well or Fedora or both, and he's also a Sigwin maintainer. And he's uh, he and I were both interested in uh, getting GNOME flashback, the continuous of GNOME fallback mode, a package for Fedora. We currently have it in a Copa repo. There's the obstacle of getting it uh, entirely packaged in Fedora because there's like f five packages, so like Mate, GNOME Panel, GNOME Flashback is its own, uh, you know, Git repo, etc. Is that uh, the the Anaconda install OS installer uses Metacity, and they're currently only tested with like Metacity 3.12, whereas we need Metacity 3.16, GNOME 3.16, etc. So there's, uh, you know, there's some we need. We, are, we will continue to try to work on that. We just have to make sure we don't step on Anaconda's toes. Um, with no flashback on me just uh, uh, find show I'll, I'll show it at the end on. So I mentioned earlier that there's you no know, better integration than just be known with Linux desktop. One of the issue limitations with Tiger VNC right now is that you know you have to man you you're relying on that script in the system or you won't overridden like Home 4.x client script to choose which session you launch. Like you have to specify the, the GNOME session command or the Mate session command, and you have to set some environment variables that only define in X session files. There are files you know user share slash X session. Um, I'm, I do have a proof of concept app where you can lock help to run the, the, the app, and then the app lets you pick the, the X session to launch. So if I just go to um, the computer and then your share X session, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and right now there is a commercial, you know, remote desktop solution called uh, ThinLink that's using Tiger VNC with their own SSH like session handling, and they have a similar approach of managing sessions. So these are dot desktop files actually that use your sessions. Seriously.
Can you guys see the text? So here's a you know, .desktop file that says, you know, launch this this command for this X session called gnome, uh, called gnome flashback and make sure this executable is installed and set the, the environment variable, a couple environment variables based on this value. But this isn't you know extremely complicated, but the problem is right now we're relying on those scripts you now under slash etc when users home directories and those often get out of sync with the necessary you know environment variables for example. Um, policy kit, I'm, I think there's still some remaining issues like yum ex seems to fail to authenticate. I'm not sure why it's something else you know to look into, but personally at home I'm using Brave Manager all the time and I'm glad that that's <laughs> those policy kit things to work in. Another issue is that so extra supports a single app mode and on the Linux desktops, if you go to it says EDC slash XTG slash auto start, you'll see all these automatically started apps. So for example, uh, you know, Whenever I try to run, uh, you know, Firefox, uh, Thunderbird um, over X to go, I need uh, the GNOME queuing daemon running so they can unlock my GPG key. But if I do it in a single app, it, the GNOME queuing daemon won't start, the only other queuing daemon start. So I would like to work with free desktop that work, aka XD developer standards, of, like these apps should be stored automatically when you're doing a small app mode. Because if I just do like right now, uh, then, um, You'll see right now it's saying that don't only start the GNOME cubing daemon in GNOME Unity and Latte. It will never attempt to start it in a single app session like X2Go has for. All right, so the next part of my talk is, is rather, so I, you know, I started using X2Go at work because you know, I had security requirements to meet and X2Go was the easiest solution for me to access servers in our lab from our Windows desktops. Um, and none of this here is specific to my, my job at Lockheed Martin, but it's some of the issues we commonly see. I literally met a, develop, a web developer at a, local, at a local tech meetup. He the application he develops is on Well Server, and it's a web application for financial companies. But he literally told me that. He said that IT security is stupid and doesn't understand Linux, therefore they won't let me run Linux on my laptop. And in, in, at other companies you have you still have other issues just trying to run Linux on your laptop and desktop. Like, corporate IT won't support you with like failing hardware if you have Linux on your laptop or desktop. And so their standard Windows image be, um, and corporate IT provide the hardware, but they're not going to you know maintain it if you're running your own disk OS. Um, and in addition to having issues with people trying to run you know native Windows app, native apps that require Windows, even many web apps developed internally by companies require an Explorer. It's like we build on brand new modern web frameworks. There'll be one or two bugs with Firefox, and they'll purposely never fix them because they want to minimize costs by only supporting IE. So, I mean, this. I mean, I, I, I know lots of people with their heart and souls into the Fedora workstation, but it's. And, and I, I know there's. Lot, I've seen you know, lot, there's lots of cool technology technology companies out there that are running Fedora workstation. I'm sure, but how many large enterprises? You just, it's. It, it's a mine, there's a minefield of problems trying to run Linux on your laptop or desktop. It's easier to just remote into a server or a cloud instance and access your, your Linux desktop that way. So, the future of remote desktop in Fedora, so I already mentioned GNOME Flashback that uh, Yakov Selk, which I am working on porting. I mentioned integration bugs. Um, I mentioned that the X session launcher. Um, and I do also want to point out that, you know, well, it's both Tiger VNC and other VNC solutions and X to go can share an existing like you know physical X server. The performance is always you know much worse. Like many people, they'll just like you know in, in Fedora workstation right now, they go to sharing, screen sharing, and turn it on. Um, but you know. Well, while this works and can be easy to stop, you will never get the same performance if you ran your own Tiger VNC, you know, process separately. In the future, well, so the Arctic project is basically a spinoff of X2Go. That's um, they develop experimental features. This is probably the thing that will shock people the most. 4K video playback. I mean, obviously my screen's not 4K, but 
via the like the telekinesis for framework for X to go, although it's not going to actually really include next to us and you put it in the project instead. Where the idea behind telekinesis is, you know, typically with remote desktop features like Microsoft RDP, in order to accommodate video, you know, the server will decode it in CPU or GPU, like you know, the Mozilla Flash Player or in player or whatever, then re encode it for RDP, and then the RDP client has to de decode it and then show it on a screen. Where with telekinesis, you're just uh, letting the it's like forwarding the video without re-encoding it from server to client. And it's fairly easy to do that because SSH opens up lots of options. Like you can use Unix sockets to do you know, secure uh, like file permission-based communication between server and client, and only the proper user accounts and server and client. So it's, you know, how much bandwidth does it require? It requires how much the 4K video was encoded with, plus a tiny bit more of SSH overhead. And, you know, and you can, you can do things like buffering too, because it's like with the YouTube video, because it's forwarding the video over to see the sockets. And then the other, th uh, this is my final slide. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Wayland is open a lot of possibilities. I'm very excited about the Wayland architecture, because part of the Wayland architecture is that, you know, the, 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 the Wayland itself is lib Wayland. The compositor slash window manager links against lib Wayland to become the display server also. And that same process is also the screen lock. So it would make possible to do things like what Microsoft RDP does, where you, you'll, you'll log into your laptop or your desktop locally, you lock the screen, you reconnect via, you know, via like, you know, some you know, desktop client from another computer. It makes sure the screen is locked locally, and then you're, but you're still using your the same testing sort of locally. And by locking the screen, you can make sure you can have the same perform, you know, the, the performance points of not doing the pixel scraping, like you share the local screen. Um, I mean, the, the, unfortunately, XCO would not be part of uh, Wayland because you know, XCO, you know, in XLibs, you know, works. It compresses and caches and eliminates the round trips with XLibs protocol and presents XLibs protocol at both ends. Um, it's, um, but I, I'm just hoping that in terms of toolkits and possibly the display servers themselves or, or the composite themselves, you can implement some sort of client-side rendering solution. There was already some work on like RDP, as all in. Uh, but like the, the guy who was working on ODP hasn't open sourced it yet. Uh, it's, it's called uh, it was, it was improving free RDP client and the free RDS server based on the free RDP client code. So that's it for my talk. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Um, but you need the web, set up web sockets to get them to work. Right. Um, I mean, that's a, like all the browsers now support web sockets, so that's not a problem. I mean, you do it on the server side. Okay, gotcha. Um, I mean, so a lot of people ask, is, is H -to -go, does X to Go client have an HTML5 version? Well, X to Go client, you know, it, it it's expecting to have an X server, on, you know, the an X server on the client, and that's what makes it so efficient, is it's you know doing saying X11 commands uh, rather than doing you know, grab, or some arbitrary protocol. So I think actually we'll find enough any smell for a client, but it's 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 efficient for that reason. And also there have been some attempts to develop an HTML5 X server. <laughs> I think it's like a you know alpha states X server on YouTube, but even then you know on, on GitHub, but even then you'd be like, you know, you'd be saying excellent commands to the browser and then the browser has to talk to the X server. So it would never be the same efficiency. Any other questions? Comments? So, is anybody here like a like a uh, uh, like a software developer on GNOME or Fedora Workstation? I mean, I can tell you that you know, uh, I've, you know, there's there's you know, there's, there's one one, and one guy and a couple other people have contributed to uh, you know GNOME Flashback. The Alcraft Software and I are working on patching it for you know for Fedora and with RHEL 7.2, which will have GNOME Fedora 14. We hope to have an EPL for that. Uh, but you know, there's lots of like Lots of people in the in the in the GNOME project think that we're trying to like fork the GNOME desktop. We're not. We just we want to maintain this alternative shell so that we can have better performance on things like you know low low power ARM hardware and you know remote desktop solutions like VNC and X2Go. Uh, like for uh, like we like we submitted a couple of patches to GNOME settings daemon. There was only two patches and they rejected them, saying you should fork GNOME settings daemon. We don't want to do that. 
I know Unity, uh, Canonical and Ubuntu had 61 patches of GNOME to GNOME setting, da setting daemons before they, they, they forked GNOME setting daemons to Unity setting daemons. That's not what we're trying to do. We do want to work with upstream projects like the rest of GNOME. I'm sorry? That's certainly the right way to go. Right. Right, I mean, original Canonical said Unity is an alternate shell for GNOME, and now they've backtracked on that and just making Unity to its own desktop environment. We don't have the you know the the, the resources nor the uh, arrogance to do that. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Yeah, you'll see me on IRC all the time. Uh, I've often I've also been hanging out in Fedora Cloud recently because I've been working on running X to go with either the Mate desktop or minimal you know single apps in a. Docker container. I'm still trying to fix some bugs, but the X, the Fedora Docker files for XTO Monte and XTO Minimal uh, should be you know, included uh, in the Fedora Docker files soon. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention earlier is, but X, you know, XTO and other solutions too can run containers. If you can use, use systemd to start the SSH server, for example, and then connect the SSH server running on like you know, port 50,000 on the host or any other port, for example. I think I would point out, as you know, in terms of like mode desktop, it's like it belongs to the cloud SIG, the desktop, the workstation SIG, or the server SIG, because all three are valid use cases for X to go against the other mode desktop solutions. But in terms of integration, most of the integration bugs you have to fix so in terms of you know the desktop SIG. Okay. Thank thank you. If you still have time, I could show off a known flashback real quick. Okay, I don't know if you have to close down immediately or what. Yeah, which is just a